Well, I bought a truck friendly GPS and I got a free bag of popcorn. Well, popcorn's pretty good, but I got a GPS. I got the truck driver version of the one I reviewed, the Garmin what, 51, 52, I have to look. This is the, five, the OTR 500. And uh, it was on sale. They were going pretty cheap, small screen, $299, uh, with all the trucking software in it. And so, I had it on sale for $249, and then I used all my loves points, and about 100 bucks. So, so let's break into this. I have, I haven't, I bought it the other day. I still haven't opened it. So let's open it up, uh, see what it all looks like, get it set up, and then um, we'll hook it up and get it going. So, like I said, it's. I have no idea what it's capable of. I haven't read up on it. I just thought since it was a Garmin, like the other one, it would be fun to have the truck version of the same one. So, all right. This product's ready to use. Looks just like that. We'll put that there for a minute. Pull this out. Let's see what there is. So, basically, it's identical to the other one. Um, so, all right. So, let's plug it in get it fired up uh start loading it up with some addresses and then we'll see how it all starts up so so far though it's identical to the car one uh but truck driver gps's and car gps are just supposed to be different so i do got a, a quick start manual so it's pretty self-explanatory um you got the back just like you had on the other one little section cut mount and all that little ball and this just snaps into this like this and it gives you a full range I mean it's a little tight because it's new but once you get that in it quite literally just snaps onto the bottom uh, like the other one so there we go so let's get the power cord hooked up and we'll get it plugged in so I got it plugged in, so it's firing up, so let's see what happens here. You really can't see it, but it's wanting me to go through a bunch of prompts. Okay, I'm in the United States. American English or others better just go with English. All right. Accept the end user license agreement. Um, wow, I can actually connect my phone to it. Well, just skip that for now. So this is interesting. It wants to know my max height. I'm going to go uh, 14 -0. Max width 8.6 here. Uh, previous. Oh, okay. Next. 8.6. Total length. Uh, 65 feet. Total weight. 8. Oh, 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 oh. Next. None. I don't haul hazmat. All right. So we'll select that. There's a disclaimer saying they may be wrong and it's not their fault. And. All right. So let me get this in the windshield and I can use both hands. So far, it's asking me for a lot of uh, things, but it wants like vehicle profile, map and vehicle set preferences, navigation, wireless networks, driver assistance, wireless camera, uh, traffic modes, and it's got a lot of stuff. Holy crap! Um, hmm. So let's go to maps and vehicle. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see it, but maps and vehicle here. Vehicle show icon on map. Let's see. 
Uh, okay, yeah, we'll put the truck on there. Why not? Um, driving map 3D view. Uh, up north. Hmm. All right, I like that. Uh, map detail. More. I like that. Uh, I like details. Map theme. Let's see. Garmin. Belgian. Deutschland. Uh, let's see. Denmark. kind of this is kind of odd Russia it should be dark nope all right we'll just go with Garmin uh, save auto zoom my maps map layers okay parking and travel history well that's interesting too so, I might do parking. Uh, okay, unloan. Uh, free, no cost. All right. So, save. So, so far, uh, not bad. It keeps trying to want me to hook up to a Wi-Fi signal, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, because if I was going to do a Wi-Fi and all that, I would just use Google Maps on my phone. So I actually prefer color mode, which is night. I'll put it on day for now. Um, got brightness is at 100%. You can dim it down uh, if you want. Display timeout. Um, never save screenshot saves an image well that's interesting units and time 24 hour let's go 24 save military time units miles or kilometers position format i have no idea uh so we've already done that so language and keyboard well Okay. All right, so we are ready to put in, which is interesting because this right here is identical to what's in there. What's built into the truck is actually also a Garmin, and it is updatable, but the antenna is busted, and I don't even know where to find one of those. I can't even find a smart nav system right now, but I can buy the new updated one and the factory replacement for about five grand no no not doing that so i'm gonna load up my uh i'm gonna load up my address to where i'm going i'm going to emporia kansas i'm in uh sioux city well north sioux city south dakota right now so let's load up so i hit start and it automatically gave me this some points of interest cannot accommodate trucks okay so, truck location, truck go home, trip advisor, address. So we're going to do 8606. Whoop, wait a minute. I got that wrong right off the bat. I re looked at the address, and I should know because I used to go there, seemed like every week for 10 years. So, let's try this again. So just like the other one, it gives you prompts like the, so it's pr pretty much the same. So, all right, yeah, so let's hit the route. Let's see what happens here. It's calculating. And, uh, all right, so four hours, 54 minutes. Uh, it's got different routes. So, Arrival 1, Arrival 2, we're going to go do, do that one. Um, okay, approaching Iowa border. Please drive to highlighted route. Okay. 
save travel history. All right, so now I guess we can work on the screen. Beans, it's going to be at night. I'm going to uh, edit it to where I can actually, I'm going to put it on dark mode. Wow, it really, you got music controls, trip data, elevation. You got all sorts of stuff. Uh, Pre-pass, garment, you can hook a lot of stuff in here. Good grief. Uh, arrival, speed. Truthfully, I'd just rather have a distance. There we are. And... Alright, so... Hit that. Yeah, this is just... Almost identical to the... The car one. Um, it's, uh... It's not bad at all. Truthfully... This is identical to the car one. And the reason I did that was um, I don't like big GPS's. And two, I just wanted to see how different it was. But there was a real reason I got this. First of all, like I stated, that doesn't work anymore. But with the new e-log setup we got, we went to Samsara. As much as I'm really starting to like Samsara, they don't have a built-in uh, GPS. So I got this just for fun to see what would happen. Um, what's stupid is I can actually set the pre-pass up. I'm not going to. But um, I got this just... It was on sale. I just wanted to try it out. And I'd like to see the difference of how a truck one is different from a car one. And truthfully... Everything I need to know is on my phone, but a truck one has a lot of benefits over a car one, and we're going to explore those. But let me get this set up, but I'm not going to be driving till later on tonight. It's going to be really late tonight. I'm, I'm doing the midnight shift. I'm about ready to go to bed. It's, what, almost four in the afternoon. And uh, so I'm going to get this set up, and I will see you oh, about midnight, one o'clock. Before I go, I ran into all these at driver alerts. It's you got quite a quite a few of them here. So that these are actually rather impressive. There's a lot of them. Uh, we'll just leave them on for now and find out which ones are annoying. And then uh, route preview, speeding alert. We'll just turn that one off. Um, brake planning, close. Uh, upcoming services. Brake reminder. Uh, we'll just turn those off. Don't need them. Uh, so, let's see. Proximity alert. Points of interest and red light cameras. Well, that's interesting. All right. There's one more thing I discovered that I don't think was on the 51. I might be wrong. On night mode here. But if you put it on here, swipe your hand across, all of this disappears and you can really uh, move around. So that makes it kind of neat hit that. But if I need that, I can hit that and go down to that. Do that there. So, truck routes. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff. And with that, now I'm going to go to bed and... Uh, We'll see you about midnight, one in the morning. So hopefully, this thing doesn't suck. So it's really early, and as per usual, my load picking up at Tyson is almost two hours late past due. But the GPS is up. It's not as bright in person, which is nice. So let's uh, let's see what happens. It does have a really nice split screen in the directions are right here on the side I can get rid of those like that for the widescreen um, but it does tend to show me state borders and it does recalculate really quickly oh, 
so as we're rolling out, it's popping up the question mark sign telling me I need to look at my route, so that's all right. Got my load, and away we go. Just like that, it's back on track, riding me back towards the interstate. It has the split screen, or split screen like the car, and that makes it nice. Gives you an idea. Spend eighty dollars on a wash, and it rains mud. I only expect that at the house. Ah, uh, well, eighty pounds to the limit, so I guess I'm good, and I only got one scale to go over. So far, this is acting like any other GPS, so. Let's get out of here and hit the interstate and we'll see what it does when it hits the scale. Up to this point, other than a couple of little nuances, this is almost identical to the car one, but I do see some differences which we'll go over here in a bit. So it's alerting me there's a way station, but it's not giving me a distance. So I stopped for fuel and I'll give you a quick summary here of what I've discovered so far. It actually is not bad. It reroutes really quick. Um, when I'm driving, it'll give me a speed limit and all that. Um, typical GPS stuff, it's already kind of outdated because the road construction and speed limits and stuff have changed all within the last year or two. But it does give you uh, options to update it at the time. I think that's where they make their money. Uh, but it will reroute me back to the interstate here. Uh, and so far, it hasn't been bad. I'm going to get on some U.S. highways here in a minute. We've got to take some U.S. highways down to Topeka. And uh, so we'll see how it does going over the uh, bridge and down the U.S. highways. and all. It is a truck route. Uh, I plan on experimenting a lot more when I get home. Uh, so far, though, it hasn't been too bad. I, I don't really like things in my windshield, but... Uh, uh, other than that it hasn't been too bad so I've got a few takeaways so far but let's get it on some US highways and uh, we'll uh, catch you in a bit so I'm here at my stop uh, now that we've parked for a minute let me show you the, the GPS uh, some neat stuff I discovered along the way so It kind of hasn't showed me being here, which is kind of par for the course. It wants to take you in the front door, and that's something you'll have to be aware of. But this was kind of neat. Um, tells me the time, mall markers, just all sorts of stuff. Uh, I mean, how much time moving, how much time stop moving, average, average, max speed. Uh, max speed even the truck stop and some of the facilities popped up on this on a split screen to show me where there was uh, trucking amenities and whatnot like the flying J over here and stuff like that so that was kind of neat uh, but there was another thing that uh, it did that I really didn't like but it's kind of other than the usual noises and stuff like that that I didn't like and this is kind of a personal preference but um, that, that did something that has the potential to get you in a lot of trouble. Actually, it did two things. Uh, one is the GPS expects you to be smart enough and intuitive enough to kind of figure this out on your own. And I've been around long enough to know that that's, that's not going to happen. Um, but when I came into like Topeka... It never said stay on 75. Now, it never said get off on US 75 either. Get off 75. But when 75 hits and it's 70, it splits off east or west of 70. It never said go 70 west. It never said anything. It just said get on 470. So I could see where it might get a little confusing because you have to stay on 75. But it says get on 470, but it never says stay on 75. So basically... You gotta take 70 over to 470, come around and you stay on 75, and then you go another two miles till you get on the turnpike. That's just a little something that I noticed. Um, 
But, uh, oops, I forgot to go off duty. Uh, but that right there would have a potential to get a fella in trouble um, if he's not paying attention. The important thing is to have an idea where you're going. Um, but with the map, it was out far enough. You could actually see, but if you're not paying attention, you could end up in downtown Topeka, and that's a huge ticket. Um, the other thing it did was when I crossed the border, it said the border was coming. Um, but borders and scales, when it says they're near, there's no predetermined length of, I, I haven't, I think it's two miles from what I could gather, but it doesn't say in two miles there's a scale or in two miles the border. It just has an icon saying it's coming up and it's up to you to gamble. Um, but also there's a way station there at the border now it's not it's just a location but as i have a general rule as long as the sign's still up and it opens and closes um it's still technically it's a state site and that didn't come up at all on the gps and that kind of bothered me so that's something that you might have to um learn you know a little nuances and stuff but aside from that uh gave me sharp uh, curves, this, that. Uh, the speed limit signs were off a little bit, but uh, I mean, it's it's your typical GPS. There's a few things that are going to be nutty on it, but uh, aside from that, I mean, this is a driver aid. This is not to drive the truck, so that's important to know. But it wasn't bad. So I'm going to set it for the house because I, there's no legal way to get to my town. So <laughs> I'm going to see how that works and then we'll wrap it up when I get to the house here in about two hours. A little rough, but we're dropped. So was it worth the money? Yeah, for what it is. Um, truthfully, I don't care much for uh, standalone GPSs, but that's just... Um, my own personal druthers. Uh, I don't like things in the windshield and I don't like cords everywhere. Uh, I'd rather have stuff integrated because these windshields on these this style truck are actually rather small. Uh, for a semi truck, they're actually a car windshield's bigger than this. But that being said, uh, it did everything it was supposed to do. Um, and, uh, it's beeping at me. And that was railroad tracks. Um, but it did everything it was supposed to do. Uh, I don't have a real complaint. It's got some neat features and I'm sure that there's a bunch that will be unlocked if you explore uh, the, uh, the app and all that. Uh, I truthfully, the problem I have with all these things like this with apps is uh, it puts it to your phone, so you have to screw with your phone while you're driving, and it's kind of a catch-22. But that being said, uh, aside from that, it's got pre-pass built into it, and uh, if uh, the only downside of that is you have to get a separate subscription for it, but. It's got a lot of stuff built in. It's got the phone, you know, you can hook it up through the Bluetooth and run your phone through it. You can uh, update it through your phone and through the Garmin app and all that. And there's a lot more to explore. It's a whole lot more to explore than was in the car app. So there's a lot of trucking tools here. So uh, with that aside, was it worth the money? If you need one and, uh, truck, and you're trucking, yeah. There's no use paying five, six, and seven hundred dollars for something, basically, to get a tablet. And truthfully, with the internet today, you're gonna spend that kind of money. You could get a subscription for about half the year through your phone and just have it downloaded. Honestly, uh, so that's kind of my thoughts on that. So, was it worth it? Yeah, wasn't bad. Uh, I like the trucking features and. It does what it's supposed to do, and uh, I'm sure there's a whole lot more there that needs to be unlocked, and I'll play with it. So, anyhow, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. This video was kind of fun, and I hope it wasn't too long. So, when I edit it, I'll try to shorten it up a bit. So, <laughs> I appreciate it.
and we'll see you next video.